Hi students, welcome in chemistry classes. And today you are seeing the videos in English. Today is Saturday, and this video is especially for the Saturday viewers. It means English viewers. Okay. And remember one thing: we have started both the playlist. Both the Hindi viewers and both the English viewers can see our videos. Okay. Hindi viewers can see the lectures on Tuesday, and English viewers can see the lectures on Saturday. Right. So this is basically. Paper chromatography. This is basically an analytical chemistry technique. Okay, we are studying here analytical chemistry from the inorganic chemistry, and now we are seeing the paper chromatography. In our previous lectures, we have seen different type of the chromatographic techniques, and in our next sections, we will also see several more chromatographic techniques like HPLC, like gas chromatography. So today we are seeing paper chromatography. In this technique. we use paper as from the name you can understand the paper chromatography means we are using paper to separate out the components okay paper paper is watts man paper okay this you can easily get in the market that is watts man paper so it is basically used for separating out components okay so one thing is clear that here we are using a paper now as you know in chromatography always there are two phases one phase is called the stationary phase and another one is called the mobile phase okay so here is also the mobile phase and the stationary phase stationary phase here is the paper okay paper is here the stationary phase paper is what are trapped so we can write what are trapped between cellulose fibers of the paper this is making our stationary phase it means there is water that is trapped between the cellulose fibers of the paper okay and mobile phase mobile phase here is actually the solvent solution we are taking appropriate solvent solution we are making the solution of solvent in a sample okay that we have to analyze so there are two types of the solvent solution this mobile phase may be of two type one is hydrophobic hydrophobic like diethyl ether or cyclohexane okay these solu these solvents we can take and we can make their mixture with the sample given to us or we can take hydrophilic phases hydrophilic may be methanol or it may be water okay now see what is the basic technique behind it okay what we have to do so see here this is a paper strip that we have to take okay this is the paper strip and here we put a drop of the sample solution like this okay and we are placing a line here with the help of pencil this is our sample drop now what you have to do this paper you have to place in a solvent chamber okay means to say we are taking a beaker like this closed beaker okay and here there is the solvent solution present this is the solvent solution and now we are placing here the paper strip in this manner this dot should remain above this line of the solvent solution okay it will not touch this so we have to place just in this manner now what will happen what will happen this solvent solution will rises up by the capillary action okay and the different components will get separate out like this now we can put out this paper and this line that we have drawn here this will remain as it is and we are getting this type of dots okay these are the different dots or different components like a b c d in this manner and the solvent will come till here okay so this is called the solvent front we will put a line here with the help of pencil this is called solvent front so in this way we are getting a strip of the paper and on which these sample so component are getting separated out this technique you can see is just like the thin layer chromatography in thin layer chromatography we have seen uh, we have taken the glass strip and we have put there the dot but here we are taking the paper okay so the solvent is rising on the paper strip with the capillary action and the different components of this sample solution are getting separated out now we have to measure their distance okay these line these dots we are getting we will have to measure this distance of the solvent rent and then we will have to measure 
the distance of different component lines from this line okay so we can find out the rf value i have told you about the rf value in the thin layer chromatography so now we can use that that point okay so rf value of a is given by distance traveled by component a divided by distance traveled by the solvent okay so the separation done by the paper chromatography may be based on the partition technique or maybe on the adsorption technique there may be the adsorption any of the both of mechanism can happen either there may be partition or there may be adsorption technique used now see the types of the paper chromatography first type of the paper chromatography may be ascending paper chromatography as you have seen above that was the ascending paper chromatography because in this technique the solvent rises upward okay here the solvent solution is rising up upward second technique may be descending proper chromatography this is just reverse of the ascending proper chromatography here the solvent rises down we have placed solution upward and sample below and then solvent solution rises downward third technique is ascending descending paper chromatography in ascending descending chromatography what is happening firstly the solvent rises upward and then goes down the fourth technique may be radial chromatography in radial chromatography actually what happens we are taking a circular paper like this okay and we are placing the sample drop on the center here we are placing the sample drop this is the sample drop now we put this paper in the petri dish okay this is put inside a petri dish we are here this is a petri dish okay and here the sample is present okay so here the sample solution is present so what will happen this solvent is coming in the touch of this sample drop and then the different sample components get separated out here we place a cotton wick here is a cotton wick so the sample components goes radially out okay in this way they get separated out the fifth and the last technique is called 2d paper chromatography in this method we put the paper firstly vertically so that the components get separated out as dots and when the component separates out then we place the paper by 90 degree rotation okay so that the components get further separated out so here two time separation is taking place okay firstly we are placing paper vertically okay and then we are doing its 90 degree rotation so the components of the sample get separated out two times okay so these are different types of the paper chromatographic techniques there are nothing to know more about this this video is sufficient for you if you are studying the paper chromatography there are some more important techniques that are much more important so in our next lecture we will see ion exchange chromatography one of the very important technique okay so stay with us and if you are liking these videos please comment me please like the videos and please share them so that we can make more and more videos thank you